Okay, so now let's look at EKG intervals and we're going to look at the QRS, which I said earlier should be less than 120. I've seen other places say that should be less than 100 milliseconds, but I've always used 120 milliseconds. But before we go there, let's look at one thing. And that's the conduction system of the heart. So we already have looked at this a couple of times. So this is the SA node here, and that's the main pacemaker cell. Here's the AV, not cell, it's a bunch of cells. The AV node, the atrioventricular node, which then passes along the messages it gets, the signals it gets from the SA node, or it can generate its own. Uh, beats if necessary. And then there's a whole bunch of conducting fibers in between. And these are what I like to refer to like as the super highways because this is what the, the electrical activity can fly through these and move quickly through here. You got the bundle of Hiss, the right bundle, and the left bundle. This one here is called the Bachmann's bundle, but don't worry about that. We're not going to uh, look at that. The left bundle is actually broken down into two. There's the left anterior fascicle and the obviously then the left posterior over here. And so what these do is allow electrical activity to, to be quickly conducted across all of the ventricle because uh, electrical activity that has to come across here it moves slowly through here. And you don't want the left ventricle to contract from top to bottom. You want it to all contract at once so everything can kind of get uh, activated at the same time because everything gets a signal at about the same time through these bundles, through these super highways, these super conducting, super fast uh, wires. And so when one of these things get b blocked, so let's say we block the left one right here, so we'll put a X through it, and then what happens now is Everything can get to the left atrium very quickly, but here it gets stuck. And so now it has to take this slow meandering path to activate the right ventricle. And so that has uh, implications on an EKG. Before we get there, let's look at one more thing. You'll remember from the previous videos that uh, it's helpful to think of the leads as being on specific parts of the body and looking at those parts of the body. So lead one kind of looked over here, lead AVL looked up here, lead AVR looked up here, lead uh, AVF looks at the over there, two and three. So what this means is that these leads here, they're all kind of at the bottom. They look kind of at the bottom of the heart then. They look at this part of the heart. And these leads here, A, V, L, and 1, they're looking kind of at the left side, the left anterior side, uh, the left, I'm uh, sorry, left side of the heart, the lateral, and maybe a little bit high lateral because this one's up high, uh, side of the heart. And A, V, R is up here looking at kind of like the right side of the heart, maybe the top, but mostly the right side over there. But what about those other leads, the precordial ones, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6? What do they look at? Well, pretend I take my light cyber and I cut this guy in half. So now you can see we got a cross section of this guy, and so now we can see where V1 and all those, look, I'm just going to use the numbers without the V, so 1 is there, Two, three, four, five, and six. And so, just like we did with the other leads, uh, these leads kind of here, one, two, three, uh, those ones are looking at the anterior portion of the heart. So they're the anterior ones. And four, five, six over here are kind of looking at the lateral side. So let's put them all together on one drawing. So we remember over here that we were looking at two different planes. There's uh, the plane that kind of goes around like this, this cross section, and that's where our precordial leads are. And then there's a flat plane that goes through like this, and that's where our limb leads are. So let's put the leads on here now. So remember that one was over here looking laterally, and we knew that L or ABL was up here. R was looking up here, right? F was looking down here, and so was 2, and so was 3. And then now let's use just numbers for the uh, precordial lead. So we have 1, 
two, three, four, five, and six. So if we wanted to look at the lateral aspect of the heart, like that area there, how are we going to do it? What leads look at that? Well, we knew that these were lateral leads, and these are kind of lateral leads. They kind of point there as well. And if we wanted to look at the bottom of the heart, so like this area here, we can look at use the inferior leads here. So these are our inferior leads. And finally, if we want to look at like the anterior portion of the heart, the front, we would use our anterior leads. Those right there, these there, the anterior leads. So we got them right lateral, anterior, inferior. So let's come back to the EKG. Which ones are the lateral leads? Well, it was one, an AVL and also V4, V5, V6. And the inferior ones were these, 2, 3, and F. And the anterior ones were these here, V1, V2, V3. And AVR kind of looks at the right side. So remember this, we're going to use this when we look at MIs as well. But now let's get back to the bundle branches. So here is our AV node, the bundle of His, the right bundle, and the left bundle. Here is our cross section, and on top of it we'll put V1 here, and we'll put V6 over here. Now let's create a right bundle branch block. So now what's going to happen is when this thing gets activated, uh, it's going to send electrical signal down here and down here. So this is going to happen very fast, and the left ventricle is going to activate very fast. Now the right one, it can't pass, so it's got to go through the slow way. It's going to take the slow process to... to uh, to depolarize because it can't use its super highway. So we know that the right, the left bundle depolarizes uh, fast, so the left ventricle depolarizes fast, and the right ventricle depolarizes slow. So how is that going to look for these corresponding leads? So for V1, it's going to look like this. So there's your P wave, and the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to have this depolarize. It's going to go away from us. So it's going to first go away, away from us, and then it's going to spend a lot of time, the electrical signal after the left ventricle goes, it's spend a lot of time coming towards us. So we're going to have this big time where it comes towards us. Boom. And you get that sort of morphology. Now you're going to get the opposite thing happening over here. So with V6, you're going to have your P wave, right? And then the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to come towards us very fast. And then you're going to spend a lot of time going away from us. And so you get that morphology. Now sometimes you might even see a little upward thing like that there, and a little small thing like that there. And the reason I bring that up, is that now this kind of looks like a letter M, doesn't it? Right? An M. And then this kind of looks like a letter W. Okay, so we have an M in V1 and a W in V6. And so, you can spell actually the word marrow here. Alright, so we got marrow. Just reminding you that in V1 it might look like an M, it might look like a W in V6, and that means it's a right bundle. Right, you're going to have the chup, boop, boop, and then the big thing going towards you. All right, let's look at left bundle. So we got a similar picture here. You've got your AV node, the bundle of His, the right bundle, and the left bundle. you got your V1 and your V6. Let's create a, a left bundle branch block. We snip it over there, and now when this thing gets activated, the signal travels rapidly down the right bundle, and the right ventricle depolarizes quickly, and the left uh, uh, bundle is blocked, so the left ventricle can't depolarize quickly. It's got to take the slow route through the muscle and go depolarize very slowly. So how does that look for our leads? So at V1, what's going to happen? We have our P wave there, and then immediately we're going to have something coming towards us as the right ventricle depolarizes, and we're going to spend a long time as everything is moving away from us here. As it um, deep, and we're going to have this stretched out portion here, which is the left ventricle depolarizing. Now what about uh, in V6. Similarly, we got our P wave here, and the first thing that's going to happen is all the signal is going to go away from us as the right ventricle depolarizes, and then the left ventricle does, and it's this big part like that, and like that. A lot of times, actually, V6 is going to kind of look like that, and that uh, kind of looks like an M, right? An M. And then uh, the V1 may or may not have a little thing like that, 
And so this then ends up looking a little bit like a W, right? So we have a W here, we have an M here, and that's for left bundle. So now we have William. So William, V1, in, it looks like a W, V6 looks like an M, and an LL there for left bundle branch block. So that's uh, the mnemonic William Merrill. And that means that uh, in V1, if it looks like a W, it's a left bundle, V6 will look like an M. If it's right bundle, V1 looks like an M, V6 looks like a W. Really quick before we go, let's look at two examples. So let's start with this one. Let's look at V6. Look, that obviously looks like an M there. So we remember from William that that would probably be a left bundle. So let's see, does V1 look like a W? Ah, not really. It looks more like a V. So maybe he's German. He's William. And since we're here, let's, let's think about the axis of this one too, right? So F is this way, 1 is this way. F is going mostly down, right? And so it's mostly negative F. And uh, 1 is mostly positive. So it's in this quadrant over here, so it's either normal or left. And, well, 2 is, is mostly positive. So it's normal, but it's in this area here. It's that portion of the, it's the left side of the normal. But anyway, so this is a left bundle branch, and that's exactly what the EKG read it as. Okay, next one. All right, here, hey, look at that. That looks like an M. Definitely looks like an M. So we have marrow, and it kind of does. It goes down first, then up, then down like that. So it's hard to see, but it kind of looks like that. So we have a right bundle branch block. And we're talking intervals, and I forgot to tell you the most important part is that the QRS should be wide in these ones. It should be greater than 120, and that makes sense because... As this gets blocked, this takes more time, so it takes more time for this left ventricle to depolarize. It's depolarizing slowly. You already know how to count boxes, but you could count them, and then you'd see that that's more than 120. And the computer also calculated it at 126. So QRS greater than 120 means we've got some sort of QRS prolongation, and we know that we could try looking for William, for a left bundle branch block or marrow for a right bundle branch block. And if it's not classic, then you could say it's an indeterminate uh, conduction delay. Okay, I apologize. I went way over my time, but we talked about a bunch of stuff. And just remember this. This is the main port part here. QRS greater than 120, you got William. QRS less than 120, you got marrow. I've never heard of anything of a QRS being too small. I don't know what that would even mean. It just depolarizes really quickly. Uh, I've never run into that. It might be something, but I don't know what never came into the cross at. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. QRS greater than 120 and William Merrill. These are the bundle branch blocks. Next, we'll look at the QT interval. That one's going to be a big video because that's a lot to go over. Adios.